Okay, this is homework practice R5. Um, so we need the first couple here are just matching. So this would be the cubed root of negative 3x. Okay, so you can see that cubed root of negative 3x there. Okay, this is the cubed root of just the x. The negative 3 stays out front. So negative 3, and then you have the cubed root of x. Okay, this is a negative exponent, so it's moving to the bottom. And it's the third root of negative 3x. Okay, so it's on the bottom because it's negative, cube root of negative 3x. Um, this is negative, so the x is going to go to the bottom, so it's a cube root of x on the bottom, negative 3 on the top. Okay, it's the cube root of 3 and dx, so cube root of 3 and the x. Okay, this is negative, so this is going to the bottom. The 3 stays on the top, so we have 3 on the top, and that goes on the bottom. Okay, the whole thing is negative exponent, so the whole thing goes to the bottom, and the whole thing is the cube under the cubed root. So right there. And the cubed root of just the x, and the 3 is outside. Okay, so those are the first matching. Um, number 9, okay, I'll do this on paper then. Okay, number 9, we want to put it in radical form. So this is the same as negative m to the one-third squared, okay, if we separate that. The one-third power is the cubed root, so the cubed root of negative m, and the whole thing is squared. It wouldn't be, it'd be okay if you also wrote it like this, okay? Either way would be fine if it's squared outside or inside. Okay, this one we want to write as a radic, as a um, exponent. So we got m and then times the 2y to the one half to the fifth, okay, one half because it's a square root, and um, so if I, yeah, so I have m, and then I have two to the one half distribute. I'm sorry, I have that wrong there. Okay, the whole thing's not to the fifth power, so it's 2y to the fifth to the one half. Okay, so um, I have the m times 2 to the one half, and then y to the five halves. Okay, usually you put the 2 first, so we could say 2 to the one half in alphabetical goes the m next, and then the y after that, but it's okay either way. Okay, number 22, uh, separate this, it would be 9 times 9, which would be 3 times 3, which is 3 times 3. Fourth root, we're looking for a group of 4, so it works out evenly. The answer is 3. Okay, 343, uh, 7 times 49, which is 7 times 7 there. Looking for a group of 3 with cubed root, which is 7, nothing left over. Okay, 45 is 9 times 5, which is 3 and 3. Um, square root, um, looking for groups of 2, so it would be 3, and then the 5, because the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, number 28, separate this out. Um, let's see, 25 and 10, and be 5 and 5 and 5 and 2. Okay, cubed root, looking for a group of 3, so this would be 5. And I have the cube root of 2 left over. That didn't simplify. Okay, 243. Um, be 3 and 81. 9 and 9. 9 and 9. Sorry, 3 and 3. And 3 and 3. Okay, so looking for a group of 4 with 4th root. So there's my group of 4. And then I have a 3 left over. So 4th root of 3. 3, 4th root of 3. Okay, this one I can write as the cubed root of 3 over the cubed root of 2. Okay, now remember we don't like that in the, that cubed root in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by something to get rid of it. Okay, so 2, I have, and I, I think about cubed root, I need groups of 3, right? So I need 2 more. So 2 times 2 times 2, right? 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 times 2. So here I would have the cube root of 12 over the cube root of 8. And you know 8 is 2 times 4, which is 2 and 2, right? So we have just the 2 left. 
So it's a cubed root of 12 over 2. Okay, 34. This is the fourth root of 3 over the fourth root of 2. Once again, I have to multiply by something here. Okay, so I have a 2, and then I need groups of 4, so I need 2 times 2 times 2 yet, which is 8. So in the top, I have the fourth root of 24, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, so there's no groups of 4. And on the bottom, I have the fourth root of 16, which we know is 2. Fourth root of 24 over 2. This one here, if we break it all down, this is 5 times 5, and then 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and then 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, looking for groups of 3. So out front, I have a 3 and times 5, which is 15. And then inside, left over, I have 5 times 5 times 3, so 25 times 3 is 75. 24. Uh, 6 and 4, 2 times 3 times 2 and 2, and m, m, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So I'm looking for square roots of groups of 2, so I have 2, and then the square root of 6 left over, and if there's 6 of them, I have m times m times m out front, and n times n with 1n left over. Number 40, uh, take the 64, 8 times 8 is 64, let's use 2 and 4, and then 2 and 2. Okay, so I'm looking for a group of 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's all used there, so it's negative 2. Okay, if there's 12 A's, how many groups of 6 are there? There would be 2 of them. If there's 8 B's, there's 1 group of 6 with 2 left over. Okay, the X's, I'm looking for groups of four. If there's eight of them, there'd be two groups of those, and then left over. The Y's, there'd be one group of Y's with three left over to make seven. And the Z's, there'd be two which would make eight, with one left over to make nine. This one here, um, now individually I could do those, but since this is plus, they're not factors. They're not things being multiplied together three times to give you this, okay? I could. Potentially, if I could say something times itself three times equal this, factor it, but it doesn't. Like this is this is one of those perfect um, cubes, uh, sum of cubes. So it'd be like a plus three and then a squared plus three a plus nine, but it's not doesn't work out. So um, not reducible. Okay, forty six. Um, we don't like this square root in the denominator here, so we have to multiply by something to get rid of it. So 3 times 3 will be 9, it'll be a perfect square, and p times p. Okay, so we multiply by 3p. So on the top, I have the square root of 15p, and on the bottom, I have the square root of 9p squared, and square root of 9 is 3, square root of p squared is p, so we have our answer. Okay, so this one is square root. Uh, once again, you could simplify some stuff on the top. I'll do that later. I'm going to get rid of this first. So if I have r to the third, if I want a square root, I need groups of two. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of r. So I have the square root of g to the third, h to the fifth, and r on the top. And I have the square root of r to the fourth on the bottom. Okay, now let's simplify. So g to the third, how many groups of two? one group with one g left over, and h, there'd be two groups with one h left over, and there's an r there, and this would be r squared. Okay, so if we think about this one, um, let's, this one, um, let's break, I'm going to break this one down just because it, it can be done pretty easily here. Um, this would be 2 times 8, which is 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2. Okay, so now I need groups of 3. So I have a one group of 3 with one 2 left over. So I need two more 2s. So I'm going to multiply by 4. Okay, so if I have one group and then I'll have two groups of them. And if I have four Ps, that means one group with one left over. So I need two more to make another group. 
that's what I'm multiplying by there. So when I multiply the tops, that would be the cubed root of uh, 36, 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, p to the second, so there's no groups of 3 there. And on the bottom would be the, what, 16, would be the cubed root of 64, which we know is 4, because it was one group of 2 and another group of 2s. And then we'd have p to the 6, which is 2 groups. Okay, there's number 50. Okay, 52. Um, once again, I'll have it with this on the bottom here. So I need groups of four. So I need to have, if there's five there, I need three more to make a group of eight, which would be a group of four. So I would have the fourth root of 32, x to the fifth, and y to the third on the top. And on the bottom, I have the fourth root of y to the eighth. Okay, now I can simplify this. Uh, 32 would be um, 4 times 8, which is 4 times 2. Okay, so looking for groups of 4, I have a group of 4 with 1, 2 left over. So this would be 2, fourth root of 2. And then with the x's, 5x's, I have one group of 4 with 1x left over. And not enough y's there. So that's what I have on the top. And that would be y squared. How many groups in 8? How many groups of 4? Two of them. Okay, 54. I would first, first multiply these together. So it's the cubed root of 8 times 2 is 16. And then we have m to the 4th and n to the 3rd. Okay, now since they're both cube groups, I can actually just divide these. So 16 divided by, two, by 32 um, would be the 1 over 2, so cube root of 2 on the bottom. The m's cancel and the n's cancel. So I have really just 1 over that. Okay, but notice I don't want this on the bottom, right? So I have to multiply to get rid of the roots on the bottom. So there, I need a group of 3. So I need two more twos yet, right? So we'll have a cube root of four over cube root of eight, which is two. Okay, this one, if I multiply them together, uh, the fourth root of r to the fourth, s to the fourth, t to the fourth, over this, okay. Um, let's actually simplify them. Okay, so they're both fourth roots. So I'd have the fourth root of that, the r's would be r squared on the top. S's, I still have those on the top. And t's, I have one t left on the top. Okay, so, so it's nice that they cancel out there. And then I don't want these any of these numbers bigger than this, so the s's, right? So I have one group of four, so that goes out front. But the others are small. I can't get a group of four there. I can't get a group of four there. And 58, okay, so two different ways to do this. One way, if you can remember this, this is, remember we just multiply those together. That's the 12th root of two. Okay, another way to think about it is this, okay. Um, this would be two to the one third raised to the one fourth, right, one third, one fourth, which would be two to the one twelfth when you multiply, which would be the 12th root. And the last problem, number 60, is the eighth root of the fourth root of y. So once again, you could just say this is the 32nd root of y, or y to the 1 fourth to the 1 eighth power gives you y to the 1 over 32, which is the 32nd root.